Welcome to the Greville Show, Method of Host Gurinder Singh Greville. I'm committing all past my mom, Jovini, um, teleconferencing Gurinder again, to get COVID Karke, these two leaders which need to be at Sagde. Mary Kas Memani, Kevin Yard, MPP, NDP party, the member Neho, Ontario the Vichy, the Brampton North, though MPP Ne, Apni community Ne, Kafi Buddha Saab, the Kunun Jitaya. Welcome, um, Kevin. Thank you, Gurinder. Sashika, I'm so glad to be with you and uh, your listeners and your viewers. And uh, we'll be able to talk about some of the issues affecting our community. Sashrika Ji, Kevin, I like when, uh, when anybody other than a Punjabi says Sashrika, that's very hard to make at that point. Well, I appreciate that. I, I practice uh, every day and uh, I, I would like to know, learn more at Punjabi, but uh, I'm, I'm working as best I can. So, Kevin, as you all know, you're an MPP from Brampton North, but you're also a member of the Standing Committee on Justice Policy in Ontario. Having said that, there have been a lot of issues regarding racism uh, around us. When I say around us, not meaning especially in Brampton North, it could be in Canada, in Ontario, in the U.S., uh, neighboring country, anywhere. What can you tell us about what's going on nowadays all around us in regards to racism? Well, exactly. And uh, if I if I could also add, I'm also a member of the uh, uh, first official Black Caucus in Ontario. And I'm, I'm proud to be a part of that uh, uh, that caucus. Now, of course, uh, racism will never completely end racism. Racism has been around for centuries. And uh, unfortunately, what we've been seeing uh, south of the border in the United States, uh, uh, it is just uh, ballooned in terms of uh, uh, what's been happening with the uh, death of the individual uh, George Floyd at the hands of the uh, police. And it more or less put racism once again on the map. Uh, like I said, it's, it's always been there, but it put racism back on the map. Uh, here in Canada, uh, we've had uh, incidents of uh, police uh, interaction with people and we've had deaths, of course, the most recent one, uh, of course, um, uh, Regis uh, Korczynski Paquette. And uh, so a lot of people have been in the streets here in Toronto and uh, around the world in Europe, as well as uh, uh, in the United States, fighting for justice, justice for Regis, justice for anyone uh, uh, in the world. And of course, uh, we're trying to eradicate uh, uh, these inequities uh, in Canada as well. And we've been seeing this time and time again, uh, where uh, black, indigenous, uh, brown people have been uh, at the hands of either police or, or, or other, other, other individuals uh, have been uh, victims of racism. So uh, we will continue to, to march and, uh, and have our voices heard so that we can uh, make some changes. We need changes because systemic anti-black racism is real. Uh, I know we've had leaders in Canada say that it's not real, that we're different from the United States. But it is real, and it is here, and uh, we are starting to make uh, headways. But uh, we do need legislative change in order to uh, see some of those uh, changes. And that way, black people will feel uh, safe and protected. So you being a black male individual who's also got an authoritative power position in the Ontario legislature, um, what can you do as an individual to make these changes? Well, there's, there's several things that uh, the NDP and myself and the Black Caucus are putting forward. Uh, a couple of things we want to do. We want to end carding. Carding uh, is unconstitutional, and we want to eliminate all the, all the material that was collected through carding as well. So that's, that's one thing. We need to improve the anti-Black racism uh, as well as the anti-racism directorate in general. Uh, this current government has uh, removed $3 million from the uh, anti-racism directorate and left it with $1,000 to use for uh, anti-racism uh, issues. So there's a couple of things there that really need to be uh, brought back into the picture, uh, putting the funding back into the anti-racism directorate, removing carding and several other issues. Of course, uh, mental health is a big concern. When you look at a lot of these, these deaths, 70% uh, of them are with people who have mental health issues. So we need to find a way to have the police uh, deal with uh, racism training, anti-black racism training, and de-escalation training as well. Because uh, police shouldn't have to go or have to go to a home and then the individual ends up dead. We've been seeing that time and time again. And the majority of the time, it's uh, usually a black person or an indigenous, per indigenous person who ends up dead as a result of uh, uh, police interaction. 
So as as recently, how you uh, spoke about in Toronto, there was an individual by the name of uh, Regis um, who was killed or she died. No one knows yet. SIU is doing their investigation. When an investigation is being led by the SIU, which is also a government body by the government of Ontario, can any changes be made in the meantime, or do we need to wait for their answers to come out? Well, that's, that's the thing. Uh, we can make the changes now. We don't have to wait for the, uh, the independent uh, uh, results of the SIU. Uh, we can make those changes right now, because uh, sometimes, as we know, the SIU investigations can take time, and in the meantime, we can make some of those changes. Uh, but what we're also concerned about is that uh, this current government, they removed a lot of the teeth, a lot of the teeth that the SIU has in terms of investigating. So uh, black people, black communities uh, are concerned that the end result will not be uh, a fair result. So what we're also calling for in conjunction with the SIU investigation is an independent public inquiry as well. So that's one thing we're calling for. We'd like to see that done as well. That way we know that we're going to get to the bottom of what happened. As you said, we don't we don't know what happened. Uh, so we need to get to the bottom of it. Uh, so the SIU, uh, they have been put in a position where, where their authority and their powers are much smaller than it used to be uh, because some of the changes that this government put in uh, last year. And are you aware of any investigation which SIU did where the police officer or the police officers were thereafter criminally charged for someone's death? Well, I'm not familiar with any like like that, but I know that the community uh, many times after after an investigation with the SIU, um, the results are not what the community thought would be, be coming through. So uh, we need fairness, we need an independent, we need an independent uh, uh, public inquiry, as well as the SIU doing their investigation as well. So we need to get to the bottom of, of actually what happened uh, to Regis Paquette. We owe it to the family. Uh, I feel sorry for the family. Of course, uh, losing uh, a young uh, daughter like that who's in her in her late twenties, and uh, she shouldn't she shouldn't have had to have died. Now, um, when we're talking about carding and issues with the policing, what's your take on bo body cams? Uh, for police officers? Well, body cameras, that, that's a good uh, first step. That it really is. However, the main concern is what we're doing with, with the money in terms of policing. Uh, we are spending a lot of money on policing. And uh, in terms of where the rest of that money should be going, it should be going to communities to uh, help uh, uh, young Black men and young Black women and Indigenous people uh, get into uh, uh, fields in education, which is, of course, is going to help them in the long term. We need uh, the money going into mental health and awareness. We need the money going into uh, training of police for uh, anti-black racism as well as de-escalation. Uh, right now, what we're seeing uh, is basically a lot of police going into communities and policing the communities. They're not doing anything else but just policing the communities. We need uh, the police officers to work with the communities. And we also need uh, uh, much of that money going to programs to help uh, young black youth so that they can, they can see a future. They, they can get into jobs. They, uh, they will feel like they're worthy. But right now, it uh, looks like uh, most of these communities are just uh, being policed and nothing more. In Brampton North, where you're the MPP, have you ever had any complaints in regards to policing and, let's say, racial bias or carding, anything related to racism and policing in Brampton North? I have, I have had uh, constituents come to uh, my office and call me and send me emails talking about some of their concerns with interaction with the police. But uh, the bottom line is, in the end, we have to work with the police. Uh, unfortunately, what we've seen all too often is... The community does not feel safe around the police, and we have to get rid of that uh, that feeling between the police and the public. So, uh, interaction with the police has to be a positive one, not a negative one. So, we need programs where the police can get the training in anti-black uh, racism as well as de-escalation. So, those are things we have to work towards, and that will bring the community and the police together, so that uh, there won't be that rift that we see right now, not just in Brampton, but but. Uh, around Canada and, and around the world, as a matter of fact. Now, as you all know, uh, nowadays the legislature is not in full force. 
So not everybody's um, going to the legislature every day. How will you be putting your thoughts across to your fellow MPPs so that everybody can can agree to what you're telling them and so a motion or a legislation can be passed? Yeah, there's, there's several things we can do. Um, uh, the House will be sitting through the summer, so through June and July. Uh, that was announced uh, last week. Um, it's not going to be every day of the week. Of course, it's going to be uh, in a way where we are sitting uh, safely in terms of uh, COVID-19. So there'll be a, a smaller group of people at Queen's Park. But at the same time, we can still bring forward uh, uh, motions and, and uh, uh, bills in terms of ch making change. And as well, we can send letters to different ministers, which is what I've been doing. I've been sending letters to the Solicitor General in terms of some of these concerns. I have other colleagues who have been sending letters as well uh, to different ministers. So, so we're still working. I know uh, people think, okay, well, there, there's nobody really there at Queen's Park, but there's many things, many different avenues we can use, different tools we can use to get the messages out there. And uh, so we can continue to push for change. So. So it may seem like we're, we're not uh, able to make those changes, but we still could do that, even though you're going to see fewer MPPs at Queen's Park. Kevin, we have to go on a short break. When we come back, we'll discuss some other issues which are happening around us and which are affecting everybody around us. So keep on watching The Grey Wolf Show. We'll be right back after this break. Welcome back to The Grey Wolf Show. Uh, to see Aj Sade Khas Mehman Di Galbat Sundri, Kevin Yard, Brampton Mouth to MPP, NDP Party the member, Apni community ne both you know the third day, Kunun Jitaya Siga, um, Tori Dir Pela, you copy from the Apni community li Kardene, overall Sari humanity we both come Kardene. Um, Kevin, welcome back to the real show. Thank you, Gerinder. Uh, so as we were discussing regarding racism, we also have another major issue in Ontario, which is long-term nursing homes. And as I believe in Brampton North, you also have some nursing homes. What can you tell us about those problems? Well, the, the, the big problem, of course, is uh, we've been seeing the problems in long-term care homes for many, many years. And uh, uh, the Liberal government failed to protect uh, our seniors, and now we're seeing that with our current government, with uh, uh, with the Conservative government, now it took the uh, uh, the military going into some of these uh, long term care homes and bringing forward the uh, recommendations and showing us what is actually going on in there. Uh, we've had uh, elderly people in bed with uh, bed sores. Uh, a lot of them have been who had COVID have been walking around. Uh, uh, the homes. So there's been so many different things that uh, the military brought to light that uh, uh, we knew there were problems, but uh, it, it was pretty bad to hear those uh, problems. And yes, in Brampton, I do have uh, long-term care homes as well. And uh, so we're doing our best to make sure that this government steps up to the plate. They say they're going to help. They say they're going to correct things. But, uh, you know, we, we saw in 2018, this government remove funding for long-term care homes. Uh, not supporting the um, uh, PSWs, where they had to go from one home to another home just to make ends meet, and uh, they didn't raise their pay. Uh, in terms of pandemic pay, they're still not getting their pandemic pay as well. So there's a whole slew of problems uh, in the long-term care home scenario that uh, uh, we haven't seen uh, be corrected yet. And we're continuing to see uh, almost on a daily basis, cases rise. The majority of cases, Gurinder, in terms of uh, cases are in long-term care homes. That's where we're seeing the majority of, of uh, COVID cases. So we, people, you know, seniors, they deserve to have be respected. We have to protect them. Uh, there are our parents, there are grandparents. And unfortunately, we, we've been seeing uh, them getting neglected time and time again from the previous uh, government as well as now the conservative government. So there's so many things we can do to put in place. Uh, for one, uh, long-term care homes that are struggling to maintain uh, the COVID-19, we have to take over those homes. Plain and simple, the government has to take over those homes. Uh, in terms of PSWs, we have to properly protect them with PPEs. Uh, still not seeing PPEs in all the homes, or at least a lot of the uh, PSWs saying they're not getting uh, PPEs, and they have to be provided the salary properly. They have to be rewarded for that, uh, for getting into those homes so they don't 
have to go from home to home to home, even though the government has said, uh, we don't want you doing that anymore. And, and they, they put a, put a, uh, an embargo on that. So a lot of things we have to do to fix this problem. And uh, I'm going to be keeping my eye out for that. But uh, right now, it looks like long-term care homes are still struggling. The government needs to take over homes which are struggling, and uh, we need action now. Now, did the, did the Canadian military come into any of the nursing homes in your writing or any or else in Brampton? They, they came into uh, Grace Manor, and there were four others uh, in southern Ontario that they came into. Uh, Grace Manor, we've already had over a dozen deaths. Uh, so it's, it's, it's a sad state of affair when the military has to come in, uh, when these homes should be being able to, to care for these uh, seniors on their own. So we've known that there's been problems uh, for many years. And one thing, one thing I don't really like, Ray, well, is having the government say that they're shocked, they're surprised at what's been going on. We've known this for years, and uh, it's time to act. It's time to act right now. I also know that um, you've been supported by a lot of truckers, uh, especially from within our community and overall in Brampton. And um, you've always talked about insurance. Is there any, any kind of rebate coming to commercial insurance or even personal insurance in the next near future? Well, let me, let me agree. Well, let me talk, first of all, a little bit about truckers. Of course, uh, uh, they are the ones who keep, uh, keep our food on our table. Uh, they, some of them have to cross the U.S. border, then come back, and uh, they're keeping our lines of uh, uh, food and uh, supplies going. So we have to support them. Unfortunately, what we've been seeing, it's, uh, we've been hearing, I've been hearing from truckers, they go to truck stops, uh, there's, there's, there's no food, there's nowhere for them to wash their hands, there's nowhere uh, for them to, to uh, properly uh, care for themselves when they go there. Some places are, are refusing that. The government did say that they will put an end to that and that there would be uh, no issues with uh, truckers going to those truck stops. And unfortunately, I'm still hearing that it's still a big concern uh, when they go to certain areas, uh, certain truck stops where, where there's no food, there's no proper sanitation. Uh, some of these facilities are just filthy. So we have to make sure we fix this problem, uh, not just talk about it, but actually fix the problem. Now, regarding insurance, as we all know here in Brampton, we pay the most uh, insurance, uh, not just in Ontario, but uh, in the entire country in terms of our auto insurance. We've been seeing uh, people leaving their vehicles on the driveway. They're not driving. They're not going to work because either their work is closed or uh, they've been told to stay or they've been told to stay home. What we've been asking for, what the NDP has been asking for is a 50% discount on auto insurance. There's fewer accidents. There's fewer cars on the roads. And unfortunately, this government has not been willing to step up to the plate and to help people. When, when we're looking at COVID-19, uh, people are, are struggling financially as well. So that's one thing we've asked for. We have not seen that happen. So that's uh, one thing we're gonna continue to push for. In terms of commercial uh, situations, of course, uh, uh, they're still paying their, their insurance and uh, the rates are still high. And uh, I've, I've spoken to some people who've called me uh, and said, well, okay, the government says you have to deal with your insurance company and see if they can give you a discount. So they've called their insurance company and many times they say, we will give you a discount. In some cases, $10 per month. What is that? That is nothing. That is nothing. And uh, so that's why we need the government to step up to the plate. And I also would like to see uh, the PC members in Brampton and Brampton South and Brampton West, those members step up and to assist Bramptonians and fight for Bramptonians so that we get uh, a fair insurance, a fair auto insurance, but I haven't seen them stepping up to the plate as well too. So if they're listening, I would encourage that they would also support uh, the 50% uh, discount on auto insurance. Now, Kevin, when, whenever you as an individual, uh, but as an MPP, uh, talk about auto insurance, do your counterparts anywhere in Ontario support you that uh, Brampton should be uh, getting the lowest, lower price for insurance premiums? Well, my counterparts, uh, Brampton East, uh, Gratton Singh, Brampton Centre, Sarah Singh, we're all fighting as well as uh, uh, down in through Scarborough in Toronto. A lot of the MPPs there are, are on board and fighting for the same thing. I mean, it's, it's fairness. The Liberal government years ago said that they would uh, lower auto insurance. They did nothing. Uh, the Conservative government said they would help lower the auto insurance as well. 
and they've done nothing as well. And we have to stop as well the discrimination based on our postal code. It's where we live. And uh, that has to stop. It should be based on your driving record. If you're a driver, you have no, no tickets, no accidents, then you should, be, you should be rated accordingly, not by your postal code. So that's one thing uh, we've been pushing for as well. And uh, unfortunately, the government's not listening. And it uh, looks like either they have their hands in the pocket of insurance companies, I'm not sure, but uh, they are not stepping up to the plate. They say they're going to help lower auto insurance, but the auto insurance rates continue to go up. And that's exactly what happened with uh, under the Liberals as well. So we're pushing for, right now, with this COVID-19, a 50% discount on auto insurance because nobody's driving. Cars are under, on sitting on, on uh, parking lots, sitting on driveways. So we do need this uh, to be uh, rectified. We need it to be done soon. But Kevin, the COVID situation is almost uh, coming to an end, it seems, with the regional um, Ontario government opening up a lot of places. So having said that, if COVID-19 has gone in the next one or two months or three months, an insurance company do not give a rebate to anybody, then what are you going to do? Well, COVID-19 is going to be around for a while. Uh, the experts say that we, there most likely will be a second wave in the fall. And uh, not sure what that's going to look like, but uh, most likely there will be a second wave in the fall. So uh, there needs to be realistic change when it comes to insurance. And um, if people aren't driving their vehicles, if they're sitting on the, on, on the, on the, on the, on the parking spots, if they are, are told to stay home, if there's fewer cars on the road, if there's fewer accidents, then it just makes sense, perfect sense, that uh, insurance rates should be less than what they are right now. The, the insurance companies are making a huge, huge profit, and I know that they can. Uh, they can they can uh, take a cut when in terms of uh, COVID-19 and, and give back to society, give back to uh, people in the communities and give them a break because a lot of people are struggling out there. Not everyone is is getting their full pay. Some people are just uh, getting the CERB and having to pay for their rent, having to pay for their food. And on top of that, they have to pay for full insurance, full car insurance for a car that's not even moving. So I hear you. Yes, uh, uh, we are slowly starting to flatten the curve, but uh, uh, there are people out there, there are experts out there who say there will be a second wave in the fall. So we have to somehow find a way uh, to mitigate the expense and, and the hardship on people in terms of insurance. And I think uh, uh, the government has to step up to the plate as well as the uh, MPPs uh, with the government here in Brampton and Brampton South and Brampton West. They need to step up to the plate and ensure that people, not only in Brampton, but right across Ontario, get fair insurance, fair value for their insurance. Well, Kevin, our, um, our time is almost at the end. Um, I would like you to tell our viewers how can they contact you if they need any help or if they want to suggest you anything. Oh, exactly. I mean, our office, like all offices, are closed. Uh, so you can still contact me. And you know, I, you know why I have to look at my number? Because I haven't memorized it. So it's 905-495-8030. And uh, that is right. That's, that's the right number. So give me a call. Uh, we're still here taking calls, listening to you. And uh, the services are still there. So give, give me a call if you have any concerns, whether it's an auto insurance, whether it has to do with racism, whether it has to do with education, whether it has to do with mental health or social issues, or if you need uh, any, any help in terms of services, call my office. We're still answering the phone, even though you can't physically come into the office. And well, be thank careful. You for being, yeah. well, thank you for being uh, on our show, uh, Kevin. Um, we will take, take you again, maybe in the next few weeks, to see as to if there's any changes in the insurance premiums. Thank you, Garinder. Well, final, final point, be careful out there, be safe out there, and listen to our health experts, uh, and uh, wash your hands, and if you go out and you can't social distance, make sure you wear a mask. Thank you. Thank you for watching The Great Old Show. I'm your guest, Kevin Yard, MPP, Brampton, North. So, um, to see Sada show, always watch the TV on Punjab Star TV. You can also YouTube on YouTube. If you have a suggestion, feel free to contact us. We'll be glad to talk to you. Thank you again. Satsuri Kaal.